Hello and welcome to the Lazy Book Club podcast, the book club for those who don't want to read or leave the house. My name is Matt Gonzalez. I'm David Cox. And I'm Josh Matheson. And this week we are looking at chapter eight, which is the Queen's Croquet Ground. Mm. She's finally made it into the garden. The, where, where, she, where she wanted to go in chapter one. It's taken us seven chapters to get there. They Ooh, teased finally. us. We thought, oh, we're, we're going to get cut straight to the action. I know. Right? She's gone, gone all around Will's mum, too, no. she? She's gone on a very big tangent. Yeah. Um, so last week, she ran into the Mad Hatter and the March Hare and the Dormouse yeah. and had a completely pointless conversation with them regarding time and riddles and all sorts of nonsense. What else is new? Yeah, they seem to be stuck in a perpetual cycle of afternoon tea and it being six it o'clock forever and ever groundhog day or dormouse yes day exactly <laughs> and they're all drinking each other's backwash Lovely. as they move around the table which is just disgusting but we're hoping that now that alice has finally gotten where she was aiming to get to that something might actually happen <laughs> it's going to be plain sailing from here nothing weird's going to happen no, exactly. all of the characters are going to be nice it's all going to make sense she's going to find herself as a person she's yeah. not going to talk to herself she's going to grow and then she's <laughs> going to wake up magically home and then she's going to marry dinah Beautiful. Oh god, <laughs> we've missed Dinah. I want more. References. She's not been mentioned. It's no. true. I She's... think the Cheshire Cat kind of took over for the last couple of chapters, but maybe that's why. Do you remember we were saying that Alice is interacting better with the characters? Yeah, she stopped mentioning her cat. She stopped. Yeah. So maybe it goes it hand in home. hand. Maybe the fact that she's now not mentioning her cat is why she's not socially weird anymore. Yeah, she's accepted the madness. Well, I also think that people who talk about their cat all the time deserve to be ostracised. <laughs> well, it's half Cats words. or ostrich? Which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> people that talk about their ostriches all the time need to be catacized. <laughs> <laughs> right, so should we uh, see what the uh, Brummy Queen of Hearts has to say in this chapter? Yeah, yeah let's, let's keep it Brummy. Yeah, let's do it. Right, oh, chapter gently. eight. <laughs> chapter eight, The Queen's Croquet Ground. A large rose tree stood near the entrance of the garden. The roses growing on it were white, but there were three gardeners at it, busily painting them red. <laughs> Took something perfect and painted it red. <laughs> That's what Danny Murray was singing about. <laughs> what I love is that there are red rose bushes. Just plant a red rose well, bush. The gardener was sacked. So they're just trying to make the best well, yeah. of a bad situation. Or well, do you remember that experiment you used to do in primary school? If you just put the food colouring in the water and then water it, they'll turn red on them by themselves. You had oh, to paint there them. You go. Alice thought this a very curious thing, and she went nearer to watch them. And just as she came up to them, she heard one of them say... Anyone? Anyone? There, there's three of them. Uh, I can't tell right now. There's definitely a number five and a number seven. Oh, wait. Are these the cards? The cards? Yes. Can they be rude boys? What? I can't do it. Like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. I'm proper road man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love that. What? Like, proper road man. <laughs> proper road man. <laughs> Is that. Um, am I okay to jump in with that one? Yeah. We haven't had any, like, streetwise people. We had a Cockney Crow, if you yeah. remember. Yeah. Good. Okay. What? You've got a good memory. Yeah. I can't remember. Right, fam. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do the editing. You know how much I've listened to these <laughs> podcasts. Man, don't like Alice, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just as she came up to them, she heard one of them say, Look out now, five. Don't go splashing paint over me like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, should five sound similar? How how can we? Yeah, yeah, just kind of different pitches. Yeah, just, yeah, like, just kind of pitch them different. Like yeah, yeah, fam. And, okay. and like, yeah, yeah, pace. You can change dynamics. Yeah. Okay, of course. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> said five in a sulky tone. Yeah. Seven jogged my elbow. <laughs> on which seven looked up and said, "That's right, five. <laughs> Always lay the blame on others." <laughs> you better not talk," said five. I heard the Queen say only yesterday you deserve to be beheaded. What for? said the one who had first spoken. That's none of your business, too, <laughs> said Seven. Yes, it is his business, said Five. And I'll tell him it was for bringing the cook tulip roots instead of onions. Seven flung down his brush and had just begun. Well, of all the unjust things... When his eye chanced to fall upon Alice as she stood watching them and he checked himself suddenly. So this is a gang that's obviously not getting on. Obviously. And what did you say? They were meant to bring onions and he brought tulips. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. 
Uh, so did he think a tulip bulb was an onion by mistake? Is that what's happened? Then? Yeah, taking it. So the Queen had said yesterday that she should be beheaded because you brought tulip roots instead of onions to the cook. Oh. Right, okay. That's fair enough. Yeah. yeah, I mean, tulips, I don't think they taste very good. And their life. Yeah. Mm. The others looked around as well, and all of them bowed low. Would you tell me, said Alice, a little timidly. Wait, they bowed to Alice? Yeah. Well, that's the most respect she's had so far from any character, isn't it? Well. These people know some manners. Mm. Would you tell me, why are you painting those roses? Five and seven said nothing, but looked at two. Two began in a low voice. Why, the fact is, you see, miss, <laughs> this here ought to have been a red rose tree and we put a white one in by mistake. And if the queen... <laughs> Look, you brought this on yourselves. <laughs> and if the queen was to find out, we should have all of our heads cut off, you know. So you see, miss, we're doing our best before she comes to... At this moment, Five, who had been anxiously looking across the garden, called out, The Queen! The Queen! And the three gardeners gardeners instantly threw themselves flat upon their faces. It's just great because even some of the grammar that's been used like fits the accent. (laughs) You know, you know, yeah, you know, all that kind of stuff is great. There was a sound of many footsteps and Alice looked around, eager to see the Queen. First came ten soldiers carrying clubs. These were all shaped like the three gardeners, oblong and flat, with their hands and feet at the corners. Next, the ten court- the guards carrying clubs. The, the guards carrying clubs, and they were shaped like the. I think they're. Uh, but the. Oh, okay. They were so carrying the guards, clubs. So the guards are. But they're big and square. And the club, they're the playing clubs. Yeah, that's what I'm trying they're to like, work yeah. out. Yeah, they're, they're, I think they're supposed to look like playing cards. Next, the ten courtiers. These were ornamented all over with diamond. There you go. There yeah, we go. Okay, it's, it's a punny moment. The soldiers sure. carry clubs. The courtiers are ornamented with diamonds and, and walked two and two as the soldiers did. After these came the royal children. There were ten of them and the little deers came jumping merrily along hand in hand in couples. They were all ornamented with hearts. I'm sorry, that's really creepy. What creepy children? Like skipping along hand in hand. No, I don't no, know. No. There's something weird about that. Next came the guests, mostly kings and queens, and among them Alice recognised the white rabbit. It was talking in a hurried, nervous manner, smiling at everything that was said, and went by without noticing her. Then followed the knave of hearts, carrying the king's crown on a crimson velvet cushion. And last of all this grand procession came the king and queen of hearts. There's a king? Yeah. Never knew that. Didn't even know there was a king. Mm. Has he ever appeared? Don't know. In the films? Maybe. It's always been about yeah, the Queen. That's the famous with, with Off the king. with his head. Like that's that's the famous character, isn't it? Yeah. I mean maybe maybe when we read on, maybe he's very passive. Yeah. Quite possibly. Certainly not got a big role to play in it. Yeah. Alice was rather doubtful whether she ought not to lie down on her face like the three gardeners, but she could not remember ever having heard of such a rule at processions. <laughs> Do you know I've just not realized, in carnival. I bet the gardeners are spades. Oh yeah. Uh, they are, they aren't isn't... they? Of course they are. That would make sense. That's just click. They're holes. <laughs> <laughs> You're a joker. <laughs> <laughs> You're a queen. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> I got your number. That doesn't quite work. Yeah. <laughs> got your letter. Yeah. And besides, what would be the use of a procession, thought she, if people had to lie down upon their faces so that they couldn't see it? So she stood still where she was and waited. When the procession came opposite to Alice, they all stopped and looked at her, and the Queen said severely, Who is this? She said it to the knave of hearts, who only bowed and smiled in reply. Idiot! said the Queen, tossing her head impatiently, and turning to Alice, she went on, What's your name, child? (laughs) (laughs) That's what we were waiting for, a nice nice long, a nice sentence that really appreciates the accent. A long-gouted vow for you to get your into. (laughs) (laughs) My name is Alice, so please, Your Majesty, said Alice very politely, but she added to herself, Why, they're only a pack of cards, after all. I needn't be afraid of them. And who are these? 
said the queen, pointing to the three gardeners who were lying round the rose tree, for, you see, they were lying on their faces, and the pattern on their backs was the same as the rest of the pack. She could not tell whether they were gardeners or soldiers or courtiers or three of her own children. How should I know? said Alice, surprised at her own courage. It's no business of mine. The queen turned crimson with fury, and, after glaring at her for a moment like a wild beast, screamed, Off with her head! Off! Nonsense, said Alice very loudly and decidedly, and the queen was silent. The king laid his hand upon her arm and timidly said, Just make him brummy as well. Yeah, all right. They're a fam. Consider, my dear, she's only a child. The queen turned angrily away from him and said to the knave, Turn them over. The knave did so very carefully with one foot. Get up, (laughs) said the queen in a shrill, loud voice, and the three gardeners instantly jumped up and began bowing to the king, the queen, the royal children and everybody else. Leave off that, screamed the queen. You'll make me giddy. And then, turning to the rose tree, she went on. What have you been doing here? May it please your majesty, said Tu, in a very humble tone, going down on one knee as he spoke. We were trying... uh, I see, said the queen, who had meanwhile been examining the roses. Off with their heads! And the procession moved on, three of the soldiers remaining behind to execute the unfortunate gardeners who ran to Alice for protection. I'm amazed she's got anyone left in her kingdom. Say, yeah. How is everyone just not dead? I know. Can't do it. Can't How put... quickly do playing cards procreate? How quickly are they being replaced? Well, you can check These are the notes, questions right? on the back of the book. Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you shan't be beheaded, said Alice, and she put them into a large flower pot that stood near. The three soldiers wandered about for a minute or two, looking at them, and then quietly marched off after the others. Are their heads off? shouted the queen. Their heads are gone, if it please your majesty, the soldiers shouted in reply. That's right, shouted the queen. Can you play croquet? So the three gardeners that we had talking, they're dead now? Yeah, I think they are. Yeah, they're oh, gone. I like them. They're yeah, quite good. So who did Alice put in the pot? I think that was the playing cards as well. You shan't be beheaded, and she put them into a large flower pot. Oh, wait, so, yeah, she's, she's yeah. Defi- so actually they're just lying to the queen then? Because if she's hidden them... Oh, yeah. And she's just shouting about, yeah, 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 no, we've, yeah, yeah, no, we've killed them. That's it. Right, okay. And that's why there's still people in the kingdom. Because they, no they just have to Because the the like, they're like, yeah, 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 no, they're dead. Yeah, they're dead. She ain't going to check, it's fine. Nah, yeah. <laughs> the soldiers were silent and looked at Alice, as the question was evidently meant for her. Yes shouted Alice. Come on then, roared the Queen, and Alice joined the procession, wondering very much what would happen next. It's it's a very fine day, said a timid voice at her side. She was walking by the white rabbit, who was peeping anxiously into her face. Very, said Alice. Where's the Duchess? Hush, hush, said the rabbit in a low, hurried tone. He looked anxiously over his shoulder as he spoke, and then raised himself upon tiptoe, put his mouth close to her ear, and whispered, She's under sentence of execution. (laughs) No surprises there. What for? said Alice. Did you say, what a pity? the rabbit asked. No, they don't even sound alike. No, no, I didn't, said Alice. I don't think it's at all a pity. I said, what for? Oh, wow. She's like, I don't care if she's dying. I, yeah, I'm essentially condoning her death. <laughs> yeah. Even though I don't know what she's done. Yeah. She boxed the queen's ears, the rabbit began. Alice gave a little scream of laughter. Oh, hush, the rabbit whispered in a frightened tone. The queen will hear you. You see, she came rather late and the queen said... Get to your places, shouted the queen in a voice of thunder and people began running about in all directions, tumbling up against each other. However, they got settled down in a minute or two, and the game began. Alice thought she had never seen such a curious croquet ground in all her life. It was all ridges and furrows, 
The balls were live hedgehogs, the mallets live flamingos, and the soldiers had to double themselves up and to stand upon their hands and feet to make the arches. So this is just going to be a circus, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got hedgehogs are the balls, yeah. flamingos are the croquet the mallets, mallets, and the soldiers are being the hoops. Doing the cro- yeah, like little little cards. Yeah, they're just alphabeting. Yeah. Kind of. Okay. I mean, resourceful. Yeah, I mean, they clearly you'd, rehearsed. You'd think that the Queen would be able to afford a proper coke set, though, wouldn't you? You would. The chief difficulty Alice found at first was in managing her flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. She succeeded in getting its body tucked away comfortably enough under her arm with its legs hanging down, but generally, just as she had got its neck nicely straightened out and was going to give the hedgehog a blow to with its head, it would twist itself round and look up in her face with such a puzzled expression that she could not help bursting out laughing. And when she had got its head down and was going to begin again, it was very provoking to find that the hedgehog had unrolled itself and was in the act of crawling away. Besides all this, there was generally a ridge or a furrow in the way wherever she wanted to send the hedgehog to, and, as the doubled-up soldiers were always getting up and walking off to other parts of the ground, Alice soon came to the conclusion that it was a very difficult game indeed. And a very difficult sentence! (laughs) Yes, wow. (laughs) It is a circus. It's literally just an absolute shamble. There's there's a reason that he's not put, like, pauses in that, is to make this sort of chaos. Yeah, yeah. That was the longest I imagine that being done like a horse race uh, commentary. Yeah. <laughs> and the hedgehog is walking away. Yeah. That, and Bill fair, the soldier is the fair, of his back like, hurts. I would pay to watch that. It, that would the be Olympics. very insane. The players all played at once without waiting for turns, quarrelling all the while and fighting for the hedgehogs. And in a very short time, the queen was in a furious passion and went stamping about and shouting, Off with his head! Or off with her head about once a minute. (laughs) Alice began to feel very uneasy. To be sure, she had not as yet had any dispute with the Queen, but she knew that it might happen at any minute. Surely the Queen must know they're not actually executing people because there would be no one left. True. Not sure she's engaging her brain. Mm. And then, thought she, what would become of me? They're dreadfully fond of beheading people here. The great wonder is that there's only one left alive. Oh, there you go. Uh, so at least she's thinking right. She's on the yes. same wavelength as you, Matt. That's she was worrying. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. Uh, <laughs> she was looking about for some way of escape and wondering whether she could get away without being seen when she noticed a curious appearance in the air. It puzzled her very much at first, but after watching it a minute or two, she made it out to be a grin. The cat. And, Me. and she said to herself, it's the Cheshire cat. Now I shall have somebody to talk to. How are you getting gone? Liam the Gallagher. Cat. <laughs> said the cat as soon as there was a mouth enough for it to speak with. Alice waited till the eyes appeared and then nodded. It's no use speaking to it, she thought, till its ears have come, or at least one of them. In another minute, the whole head appeared. And then Alice put down her flamingo and began... <laughs> <laughs> Wait... Hang on a second. And then again, another thing where it's funny, but I'm not convinced it's intended to be. No, because we're just thinking of the business. It's always the business of yeah. things that are funny. Because you're just like <laughs> the flaming is just like put it's me the down. normality of the abnormal. Does she put it down on its feet? Like, yeah, I don't or does she just or sort on of its head just drop rack. it on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. And then Alice put down her flamingo and began an account of the game, feeling very glad that she had someone to listen to her. The cat seemed to think that there was enough of it now in sight, and no more of it appeared. I don't think they play at all fairly, Alice began, in rather a complaining tone, and they all quarrel so dreadfully that one can't hear oneself speak, and they don't seem to have any rules in particular, at least if there are, nobody attends to them, and they've no idea how confusing it is, all the things being alive. For instance, there's an arch I've got to go through next walking about at the other end of the ground, and I should have croqueted the queen's hedgehog just now and it ran away when it saw mine coming i love the croquet hmm. is that a was that a verb could be yeah. probably I just don't use it i think croquet is when you hit your ball into someone else's yeah oh. how do you like the queen said the cat in a low voice not at all said alice she's so extremely 
Just then, she noticed that the Queen was close behind her, listening. Oh. So she went on. Awkward. Likely to win, that it's hardly worthwhile finishing the game. The Queen smiled and passed on. That was quick. I applaud Alice for that. Yeah, that was, that was a good way of, of turning the negative she'd already said into, a, oh, I'm just a sore loser, not because you're a bad person. Yeah, like, she's done clever. well there. Who are you talking to? Said the King, coming up to Alice and looking at the cat's head with great curiosity. Uh, it's a friend of mine, a Cheshire cat, said Alice. Allow me to introduce it. I don't like the look of it at all, said the King. However, it may kiss my hand if it likes. That's weird. I'd rather not, the cat remarked. Don't be impertinent, said the king, and don't look at me like that. He got behind Alice as he spoke. A cat may look at a king, said Alice. I've read that in a book somewhere, but I don't remember where. Well, it must be removed, said the king very decidedly, and he called to the queen who was passing at that moment. My dear, I wish to have this cat removed. The Queen had only one way of settling all difficulties, great or small. (laughs) Off with his head! Yeah! She said, (laughs) without even looking at it. It'd be a really good drinking game, wouldn't it? (laughs) Yeah, oh, mate, you would be battered by now. He said every time she said, Got it off with your head. head, Yeah. (laughs) You would be off your head. Yeah, there you go. I'll fetch the executioner myself, said the King eagerly. Snowed and under. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got a backlog of two months. It's like... <laughs> a whole kingdom to execute. Yeah. <laughs> and he hurried off. Alice thought she might as well go back and see how the game was going on as she heard the Queen's voice in the distance screaming with passion. She had already heard her sentence three of the players to be executed for having missed their turns and she did not like the look of things at all as the game was in such confusion that she never knew whether it was her turn or not. So she went in search of her hedgehog. (laughs) The hedgehog was engaged in a fight with another hedgehog. (laughs) Which seemed to Alice an excellent opportunity for croqueting one of them with the other. The only difficulty was that her flamingo was gone across to the other side of the green, where Alice could see it trying in a helpless way to fly up one of the trees. By the time she had caught the flamingo and brought it back, the fight was over, and both the hedgehogs were out of sight. But it doesn't matter much, thought Alice, as all the archers are gone from this side of the ground. So she tucked it under her arm, that it might not escape again, and went back for a little more conversation with her friend. When she got back to the Cheshire Cat, she was surprised to find quite a large crowd collected round it. There was a dispute going on between the executioner, the king and the queen, who were all talking at once, while all the rest were quite silent and looking very uncomfortable. The moment Alice appeared, she was appealed to by all three to settle the question, and they repeated their arguments to her, though, as they all spoke at once, she found it very hard indeed to make out exactly what they said. I'm trying to work out what they're arguing about. I wonder if it's because only the head has appeared... I reckon the execution is trying to work out what he has to chop off. Uh, That's my guess. Okay, okay, okay. Do you know what I mean? Because if there isn't a body and they've set off with his head, Mm. technically the head's already off. True. Mm. The executioner's argument was that you couldn't cut off a head unless there was a body to cut it off from. Nobody to go with, yeah. That's I believe uh, if we're keeping score, that's one. Yeah, what's that joke? It's like, why why did the head... Oh, why did the head... Headless. Not go to the. Oh, why did the headless person? No, why did the head not go to the party? No, I. I he had no body to go. With I it. thought it was a skeleton. Why did the? Why didn't the skeleton go? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, he didn't feel good in his skin or something like that. <laughs> 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 no, I heard that one before. <laughs> he didn't have the heart. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have the cleaner parts. He had never had to do such a thing before, and he wasn't going to begin at his time of life. The king's argument was that anything that had a head could be beheaded and that you weren't to talk nonsense. The queen's argument was that if something wasn't done about it in less than no time, she'd have everybody executed all (laughs) round. I like her argument the best. (laughs) I don't think I agree with the king. I don't know if you can behead a head. No, it's like what you're chopping up. Yeah. Yeah. Do you just go like that down the side of it and go, well, there you go, that's it, yeah. done. Mm. 
It was this last remark that made the whole party look so grave and anxious. Alice could think of nothing else to say, but it belongs to the Duchess. You'd better ask her about it. She's in prison, the Queen said to the they executioner. They have a prison for punishment, but... They yeah, but she like, executes yeah. everything. It's not like a three-strike system. Of no. Warning, right. prison, execution. But the Duchess... No, it's who actually execution. Phys- she physically assaulted the Queen yeah. and went to prison, whereas some of them aren't playing croquet as well as they should and being executed for it. Oh, this justice system... It's all over the shop. Bizarre. It's not good. Fetch her here. And the executioner went off like an arrow. The cat's head began fading away the moment he was gone, and by the time he had come back with the Duchess, it had entirely disappeared. So the king and the executioner ran wildly up and down looking for it, while the rest of the party went back to their game. End of chapter. That was just an mm. absolute circus, wasn't it? Carnage. Yeah, it was crazy. It was fun, though. I reckon, yeah, I mean, that's always been one of the very iconic scenes in, like, the movies and stuff like that. Just mm. the farce of them trying to play croquet. I yeah. remember the flamingo bit. Yes. Like, and the and, hedgehog and the, balls. I the, remember the, the hedgehog card balls. card people. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, like, um, croquet, when it first came out, was actually seen as very scandalous as a game. Why? Because men and women could play it together. Oh. And it was seen as being a bit risque because it allowed mixed couples to play Mm. and what's interesting is that um apparently a lot of men used to not enjoy playing it one because women could play it and two because it was very easy for women to cheat because they had such long dresses that they could stand over their ball and then move it with their foot and then walk off no way they could have moved their ball under their skirt and you wouldn't have known you wouldn't want a hedgehog under your skirt though. no you you wouldn't want a hedgehog (laughs) But yeah, apparently like croquet used to really rile people up. Like, so this is actually quite a good representation of what playing croquet at this time used to be like, because wow. people used to get into proper arguments and fights over it That's because nice. people used to find it so infuriating. And because it's so tactical and you can directly single someone else out and really punish them mm. by knocking their ball away, it used to cause a lot of arguments. Wow. So that so, and it's quite high stakes because if you do have a big argument, you have a mallet, um, yeah, <laughs> so, you know, or a flamingo, <laughs> yeah, a flamingo, <laughs> a bit more fabulous, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I do, I do realize that Lewis Carroll does have a flair for the kind of very flamboyant, flamboyant. Yes, exactly. And I wonder if it's like, is this because uh, obviously flamingos have been kind of adopted very recently as this kind of gay pride. Icon mm. You have like flamingo thing. straws and those flamingo glasses. Yeah, and, and, and you see, I see a lot of like my musical theatre friends with the flam- inflatable flamingos in the swimming pool mm. in like Ibiza or whatever. Um, but even like for, for, you know, the fans and yeah, all this kind of stuff. There's a lot of very kind of flamboyant imagery and moments. Could, I guess like because that, but it could even be that in those days the sort of aristocracy. I know it would have been in Georgian times where. Oh, he was a Arist- dandy. Aristo- yeah, aristocracy <laughs> was really flamboyant, you know. It's true. Powdered yeah. makeup and yeah. wigs. Women and be- were wearing forests on their head. Yeah. And, yeah. So the the idea of what we would consider to be quite camp, yes. to be... Yeah, all, all the aristocracy would have been in tights and full face of makeup with a beautiful Canes. Spot. Yeah. 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 High heels. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. High heels were going- originally for men. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't for women. They're, oh, they're actually awesome. seen as being very masculine. Does this, cha- does this change our perception of the rabbit? Like, he's in, <laughs> he's in high heels, a big powdered wig, like a little <laughs> beauty spot. I mean, <laughs> With a fan. A, that's a world I want to live in. Yes. If rabbits look like that in the wild, Earthy. I would really enjoy nature a lot more. So what's quite interesting is that, like, the queen is seen as the person of authority because of her title and the fact that she's bossing everybody around. But what's quite interesting is that the gardeners, the king and the executioner all defer to Alice and ask her to mediate in the conflict. That's true. Which indicates that they actually believe that she has some measure of authority. Well, that's why the gardeners bow to her right from the yeah. off, don't they? Mm. So it's kind of weird that she's turned up and suddenly everyone's treating her like she's a somebody. Mm. And this is the first time that's happened as well. Most people seem to just insult her. Or are indifferent to her, Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, Alice only has to wake up to destroy Wonderland and all its inhabitants. Oh. 
But also, so it's the, like maybe it's the thing because it brings an end to the dream. It's like technically she is the all powerful being in this mm. thing because well that that's that's if you believe that this is all a dream. Yeah. What's also kind of interesting is that all of the animals are the subjects of an inanimate object because technically the queen's a playing card. Oh, yeah. So you've got animals playing inanimate objects and inanimate objects playing people. Yeah. Which is again this whole kind of topsy turvy. Yeah, world of like. I guess I, uh, I I always had that image probably from Disney about the the soldiers and the gardeners being cards. Mm. But I never pictured the uh, the king the king and the queen being cards. Yeah, so I, I guess in my head they were always people. Yeah, but no, I suppose that's why they call it the queen of hearts, like you would say in, in a pack of cards. Yeah, queen so of she's hearts. supposed to be a card as well. Yeah, yeah, they're all cards. Would you explain why her children are all playing cards? Yeah, as well. Yeah. If you have any thoughts on this chapter and you'd like to join the conversation, then you can get in contact with us on thelazybookclub at gmail.com. Or join us on the Twitter sphere at lazybookclubpod. Or you can hit us up on Instagram on the same handle at lazybookclubpod. Now, I'm actually kind of intrigued because as far as I can remember for the movie... The croquet is probably the last thing in my head that I can actually. Yeah, think that to me, I'm like, so we've got a few. How many chapters left? Is we've it still four? got four more chapters. So we're only two twelve thirds. chapters. So I'm I'm honestly at a complete loss as to where this story goes after this. I have absolutely no idea what comes after this. Wow, I can tell you the name of the next chapter. Yes, yes do it. I'm hypothesize. I mean, chapter nine to throw us completely off the scent. Is called the Mock Turtles story. So is this another character that didn't make the cut yeah. <laughs> of the movie again? <laughs> it's either is a Mock Turtle a bird? Oh, I don't know. No, or is or it's is a it turtle? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's like a turtle dove, or it's one of the other characters mocking a turtle. They were a band in the nineteen nineties called the Mock Turtles, but I don't think it's anything to do with that. Well, I just put Mock Turtle into Google, and it's come up with a soup recipe. <laughs> yeah, mock turtle soup. Yeah, mock turtle soup is an English soup that was created in the mid 18th century. Ah. So that's like in line with it as a cheaper imitation to green turtle soup. So maybe he's. But then the, the mock is a calf's head or calf's foot. So maybe the mock turtle is a cow. Maybe it's him trying to throw a curveball at us again. Well, it's certainly throwing up some questions. Yeah. Well, so there we go. Let's tune in next week to find out if it's actually a turtle or if we're actually talking about a cow. See you there. <laughs>